we now begin a series on physical equilibrium, which is the equilibrium between phases like solid and liquid, liquid and gas, and so forth. This video presents a very simple concept that will be foundational. So uh, what we see right here will be very important as we move forward with this material. Uh, here we are going, going to review the condition of stability. So uh, we're going to be asking a very simple question. What determines whether a phase transition is possible? Right? So suppose you have uh, uh, some liquid and some solid, some substance. The question is that we're asking is, is the fusion of that solid into the liquid spontaneous or not at the conditions of pressure and temperature that you're working on? All right, so let's uh, try to see if we can unravel that question by doing a very simple uh, experiment here. So we have here water and you have a little bit of ice floating on the liquid. And we're going to assume that there's a tiny little amount of the ice turning into the liquid and this amount is just going to be infinitesimal, so differential of n. And the question that we're going to be asking is, well, is that change of the ice into the liquid, that fusion, spontaneous? at those conditions of pressure and temperature that we're working in this experiment. Right, notice that phase transitions, any phase equilibria, right, that is going to be taking place at constant pressure and constant temperature. So what that means is that the only thing that we need to predict spontaneity is uh, the sign of the change in Gibbs energy in that process. So that is exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to calculate the sign of differential of G for this process, and if that's negative, then we will see that the process is spontaneous. If it's po uh, uh, is it positive, it's not spontaneous. And if it's equal to zero, then we will be at equilibrium. All right, so the only thing we have to do then is calculate what the Gibbs energy is before that infinitesimal amount of ice turns into the liquid. After, take the difference, and then we'll figure out what the sign of that is. Okay, so let's figure out what the total Gibbs energy is before the process takes place, right? before this tiny little bit of ice turns into the liquid. Okay, so uh, here what we have is two components. We have the solid, the ice, and then the liquid. Right, so the total Gibbs energy uh, of the system is going to be the sum of the Gibbs energies of the components. And again, we have two. Now, we're going to be using more quantities for the phases, which means that the total Gibbs energy of a particular phase is just going to be the product of the moles of that phase multiplied by the molar Gibbs energy of the phase, right? So uh, to write that a little bit better, notice that again, this total Gibbs energy initially is going to be the sum of the molar Gibbs energies of the ice and the liquid and the uh, Gibbs energies of the ice and the liquid are going to be just the product of the moles of the ice times the molar Gibbs energy of that phase of the ice. And then for the liquid, you just have a number of moles of the liquid multiplied by the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid. Okay, so that is before any change takes place. All right, so the change is going to be one in which we are uh, transforming a little bit of the ice into the liquid, right? So what is going to happen then is that uh, you're losing a little bit of a few moles of ice and you're gaining a few moles of the liquid. All right, so let's see how that turns out to be. This is the final Gibbs energy. So that will be your initial amount of ice that you had minus the little bit that has transformed into the liquid multiplied by the molar Gibbs energy of that phase, the ice. And then uh, to this you have to add the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid phase, which is just the number of moles of the liquid. But notice that now you have a little bit more because this, uh, uh, this ice has undergone uh, fusion and you have a few more moles of the liquid than you did before multiplied by the molar Gibbs energy of the liquid. All right, very good. So in order to calculate the change in Gibbs energy, we just have to subtract final minus initial, the top from the bottom, and this is going to be simply differential of G for that phase uh, transition. Okay? All right, so let's see. Uh, when you distribute this product, notice that you're going to have a term here, n ice, molar Gibbs energy of the ice, that is going to be exactly like this one. And when you distribute that product, that is also going to be the same as that one. So the only terms that survive are those that have the differential of n. Okay, so let's write them down. 
here you have minus differential of n multiplied by the moral Gibbs energy of the ice plus differential of n multiplied by the moral Gibbs energy of the liquid. Okay, that is uh, uh, your overall result, which is the same thing as if we take common factor here, differential of n, that is going to be the moral Gibbs energy of the liquid minus the moral Gibbs energy of the ice. Okay, so we come to the really important part of this video. We're trying to predict whether this transformation is spontaneous or not. Okay, right, so we want to know what the sign of this differential of J is. All right, uh, this differential of N is always going to be positive. There's always uh, that this will be 0 0.02 moles or 0 0.1 mole, but that is always positive. So if this process is spontaneous, which means that this has to be negative at constant pressure and temperature, then that needs this parenthesis to be spontaneous, right? So in order for that to happen, the more Gibbs energy of the ice with this your starting phase has to be larger than the more Gibbs energy of the liquid. Okay, so that is the condition for stability. Let's, let's, we're gonna uh, repeat this a few times, right? And you need this to be negative, and what that means is that the more Gibbs energy of the phase you're starting from has to be larger than the more Gibbs energy of the phase you're ending in. Okay? Uh, there's another way to say this, and that is that a process will, a phase transition will be spontaneous if it minimizes the more Gibbs energy. Right? You're going from a situation of high more Gibbs energy, relatively high more Gibbs energy to a situation of lower uh, more Gibbs energy. If that's the case, the, uh, the condition of uh, the transition is spontaneous. Okay? There's yet another way to say that, okay? and that is that whenever you have various phases coexisting, solid, liquid, gas, right, the phase that is stable is the one that has lowest more Gibbs energy. And that is the case because if you set up any transition from the other phases to that phase of lowest moral Gibbs energy, what will happen is that this parenthesis will be negative, which means that those phase transitions that end up in the phase of lowest moral Gibbs energy, those will be spontaneous. Okay, so we're answering the question is, well, what is the stability of a, of a phase under some conditions of pressure and temperature? The phase that is stable is that of lowest molar Gibbs energy. Okay, great. So uh, uh, that's kind of the, the gist of this video. Uh, I'm going to tell you just one more thing that has to do with semantics uh, that will be helpful in the future. Notice that it's just the values of the more Gibbs energies that uh, control uh, the stability of a system, right? So these uh, more Gibbs energies are so important that we actually generally don't call them more Gibbs energy. We actually call them, we rename them to call them chemical potential. And that chemical potential is called mu, which in this case will be mu sub L, and in this particular case will be mu sub I, or mu sub solid. Okay, so again, uh, more Gibbs energies control a phase stability. Okay, and they are so important that we rename them uh, as chemical potentials. And these chemical potentials we're going to continue to use in future videos. All right, in the next videos we're going to see some more aspects of uh, phase stability and phase transitions taking into consideration this condition for stability that we have just introduced in this video.